Yo, what's going on everybody? Welcome back, Justin here as always guys. Thanks for stopping by and hanging out with me today. Let's talk about the black phone. So guys, I just got home, walked in the door, I just got out of the theater seeing this movie and I am so excited to talk about the black phone. I was really scared that maybe this wouldn't live up to all the hype and I know personally, I was very excited to see it. This movie was directed by Scott Derrickson. He did Doctor Strange back in 2016, The Exorcism of uh, Emily Rose. He did Sinister, which I thought all those movies were just fine. Exorcism of Emily Rose, is actually pretty damn creepy, but by far, out of all the films that I've seen from Scott Derrickson, The Black Phone is easily the best film, and this is a high contender for one of my favorite movies of 2022. It's definitely going to be in that top five, guys. The Black Phone is f***ing Awesome. So glad to see the, the movie was packed uh, in the theater. There were tons of people. It was a very active audience at my theater. People were cheering and clapping and gasping at times when it was, everything was supposed to be very quiet. You could hear a pin drop in the theater because this movie does a very good job at playing to your emotions. But, but what, I, what I do want to start off with, I don't want this to review to be very long. I just want to tell you guys to go see this movie. This movie's going to be spoiler free. I tend to rag on Jason Bum a lot because let's be honest, Man, Blumhouse does not have an amazing track record. There's a lot of filler, a lot of very subpar generic horror films. I give the man credit for kind of blowing up horror to the mainstream by making low budget movies and making them successful in the box office so that they continue to crank out more movies. But a lot of times it does tend to be a lot more quantity over quality. But here with the black phone, I gotta give him credit. This is all quality. There's lots of lazy writers who are just cranking out things for mass audiences, but it's up to the studio, it's up to the distributors, and it's up to people who have a keen sense uh, and wanna take some chances to actually push the movies out, produce, and fund original ideas. And that's what this movie does so well. We get a movie that's not a reboot, it's not a sequel, it's not part of a franchise, it's not a sinister movie, it's not a Conjuring universe, it's its own thing. And David Pumpkins is his own thing. I hope this doesn't spawn some kind of black phone universe. I think this is great as a one-off. All that being said, let's actually talk about the movie, but I think it's very important to point out the fact that this movie is an original concept. It's in theaters, it's getting good word of mouth. My theater was packed with a bunch of excited uh, audience goers, myself included, and I just had a great fucking time at the movie. I hope this movie does well because it's just awesome. Now all around the performances are fantastic, especially Ethan Hawke, the role of the grabber that Ethan Hawke plays. It would have been very, very easy for an actor to really try and chew the scenery, overact, get over theatrical to play this role, and he holds back and it's subtle. And because of that, it's very creepy, very effective. There's some moments of a lot of charisma. Uh, the performance is not super over subdued, but it's just restrained. This movie takes place in the late 70s. It centers on this small town. Now, it is a captivity movie. It's about uh, Ethan Hawke playing this character called the Grabber. He drives a creepy black van and kind of trolls the neighborhood and picks up kids and locks them in his basement. This isn't something 100% completely original. We've seen held in captivity movies many, many times, but the different turns and twists and the setup before the kidnappings really start that makes this movie stand out. Setting up an atmosphere, a tone, letting us get to know these characters a lot. I know I hammer about characters because characters are the most important part of a story. I wouldn't you say, I would say. Uh, How about I just go eat some hay? I can make things out of clay and lay by the bay. I just may. What do you say? It's not a movie just packed with jump scares and a bunch of bullshit filler. This movie is filled with great writing, some humor, but what it did very well is restrain itself. For the first, about third, maybe a little over third of the movie, you're getting a lot of table setting, you're getting to know these characters, but at the same time, it isn't slow. There's a lot of disturbing, really kind of harrowing moments even before uh, the main setup, the main kidnapping happens. There's a lot that goes down that is really sort of shocking and emotionally gripping before the main plot really kicks in. The movie follows this family. It's a small family, a dad and his two children. 
brethren, a brother and a sister. You really focus on that brother and sister character. They have an amazing relationship. I have a sister myself, a little sister, kind of like in this movie, and I couldn't help, as I was watching this movie, I kept thinking about her. It's actually her birthday. Happy birthday, Rachel. She's been on the channel many times. Uh, it's her birthday today, so happy birthday, Rachel. But um, the emotional core of the brother and sister is just, it, it was really special and it was really well done. Their, their dad is not that great of a guy. Again, it takes these tropes and spins them just enough because as much as you want to hate this bastard of a father and he does do some really shitty things uh, to these kids, he kind of, sort of has some motivations that you don't completely sympathize for, but it gives you just enough under the level to where it's not just stereotypical generic, mean, beer drinking, abusive uh, dad. It's it's more than that. And every character just goes a little bit deeper. And I, I just give a credit to this script for, God damn it, just trying a little bit. After my rant about Jurassic Park Dominion not giving a fuck about anybody that's watching the movie, just appealing to the lowest common denominator, the kidnappings start happening, uh, a couple other people, and you really feel the threat um, before our main character is, is kidnapped. You know, that's one of the main characters is kidnapped. So long before it happens, you really feel the ominous uh, the ominous dread that as one kid goes missing and another kid goes missing and another kid goes missing, uh, this whole setup at the beginning of the movie is great. The music is really good. There is some score in there, but there's also some great 70s needle drops. Uh, but the soundtrack is it's just a great soundscape. Uh, it's uh, it's not a lot of dun 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 dun, dun, dun kind of like classic, you know, like suspense music or a bunch of strings or violins. No, it's like more of a soundscape. Uh, this uh, these creepy tones and sounds. And then once our one of our main characters gets kidnapped, then it does something completely different. But there's a whole nother supernatural, almost ghost story aspect to this movie that was really, really well done. This movie is a captivity movie, it's a suspense movie, it's a ghost story, uh, it's a, a story of uh, a family, and almost a coming of age type of thing. It's a great setting being that it's in the late 70s. I just fucking love this movie and I want you guys to go see it. Um, I give it my high, highest recommendation. I can't see, I can't wait to see where this movie ends up in my top 10 uh, because I, I can't see this not being in my top 10 and probably in my top five. Now, definitely go out to your theater and watch this movie with an audience. I think this movie's gonna have some legs. I haven't looked at the reviews yet. I'm gonna go look at the reviews. I'm assuming they're probably pretty good, which means that the word of mouth will spread and this will do well. And this is just yet another reason for the studios to attempt to uh, bring original ideas to, to the forefront for audiences to see because this movie was just so, so good. There were some moments that had me tearing up, like got me really super emotional. The, the performance from the young girl in this one specific scene was so believable. A lot of times younger actors you can kind of see through. Um, I remember the last time I saw really believable, like crying and really, really good acting was uh, and, uh, like Dakota Fanning way back in the day. She was kind of this savant type amazing actress as a kid. This, I think we're gonna see a very bright future for the actress in this who plays the sister. Just so, so good. I was tearing up at a couple times in this movie because the performances and the story uh, were just that good. So rush out and see this movie. I hope you guys, uh, if you guys have seen it, I hope you dug it. If you didn't, you know, not, not every movie's for everybody, but kudos to Jason Blum for uh, putting original concepts out here guys definitely let me know in the comments what you guys thought of this movie uh, And I think I think we're done here guys stay weird remember to always be yourself and I'll see you guys in the next one